let's go ahead and get into the Anytone software version 3.04. As you know, with 3.02 to 3.03, you actually had to save your code plug file and then install the new CPS and then flash the firmware before you could even read the radio because 3.03 was not backwards compatible with the 3.02 firmware. 3.04 is backwards compatible with 3.03 firmware to be able to read your radio and save your code plug. So you can install the 3.04 CPS first and then read your radio, save your code plug file, and then do the firmware update procedure. So I will go ahead and share my screen here. Let me know if anybody has any trouble seeing that. All right. So this is for my current radio. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna read the radio. So I'm gonna go to set com, which is actually this button right here, if you guys can see that. Um, also you can choose set and then set com off of the menu bar. My radio is on COM3. I'm going to click OK and then read radio, which I can do either program read from radio or I can click the arrow pointing to the computer. I'm not going to save this. I'm going to click yes. And I don't want to do the digital contact list right now because it'll take forever to read that off the radio. And I'm just going to update that later anyway. So go ahead and make sure other data is checked. Click OK going to read the radio. And once it's done, the radio is going to reboot and you're going to see a message on your screen that says PC read while it's reading the radio. So hopefully you guys can see that. All right. And now what I can do is I can actually go to firmware update mode on the radio. And how we're going to get there is once the radio reboots and we're back to our main screen, I'm actually going to turn the radio off. Then I'm going to press the, on mine, it's the tealish blue button or tealish green colored button for the 878UV2. On the 878UVs, it's going to be the sky blue button. So press and hold this button that I'm pointing to next to the antenna and your push to talk button and at the same time with the radio off. Then uh, what you're going to do while holding both of those is turn your radio on and you should get a red blinking light right here, right next to the volume power knob uh, switch. So um, give me one second here. Um, so we're going to try this here with one hand on that. And you'll see I've got the red blinking light now. So now I can go to the software, go to tool, firmware, updates and icons, and make sure COM3 is selected for my radio. You definitely want to double check and make sure you're on the right COM port for yours. Open update file. And then I'm going to go to downloads. And then it should be the D. Let's see here. Should be D304. And then right here, the folder that ends in FW is firmware. I'll click there. Click here on the SPI file. And click open. File open succeeded, or I think they misspelled that. Um, go, I'm going to click right, right to radio, continue, click OK. And then this is going to write the firmware to the radio. Now, once we're done doing the firmware update, the radio is going to reboot, but we are going to have another step, which is the MCU reset on the radio. So um, after that, we actually have to turn the radio back off. And we're going to press the push to talk button again. But then we're also going to press this middle button right here on the side, which is known as PF1. For those of you who actually uh, memorize what each button's name are, is, um, push to talk, PF1, PF2, and then the button on top is PF3. So we're going to press and hold the push to talk and PF1, which is right here. 
and then turn the radio on. We're going to keep holding both of those in. And the radio is going to say booting. And then it'll say, are you sure you want to initialize radio on the screen? When we see that message, we release both buttons. And then we're going to press the green and black button right here. Um, this one right here to confirm. And then it's going to ask us to set the date and time again. Um, I never mess with it myself to set the date and time uh, just because I'm always testing people's code plugs. So it doesn't do me any good to set the date and time if I've got a code plug that's, you know, messed up um, that I have to do a factory reset on the radio again. So radio is rebooted. I'm going to turn it back off. I'm going to press and hold the PF1 and the push to talk button. Turn the radio on. Keep holding those. It'll say booting. Please wait. And then there is the message that says, are you sure you want to initialize the radio? I'm going to press the green button to continue. It'll say initializing uh, radio or initialize radio. And then it'll reboot again and ask me to set the date and time. And I'm just going to press confirm when I do that. All right, there's the calibrate, calibrate date and time. So I'm just going to press confirm, which is that black button with the green dash on it. It's going to come up in VFO mode. And then I'm going to tell the software to write to the radio again. Um, once I do that, my code plug will be back and I'll just need to update my contact list. So I'm going to go ahead and click exit. Go up here to program, write to radio. And it's going to say, write data to radio. Do you wish to continue? Click OK. And I just want to select other data this time. I'm going to click OK. And now on our screen, we see PC write. So it's writing to the radio. Once that's complete, the radio will reboot. And we'll actually see copying data to radio. Please wait to power off or do not power off. Radio will restart. Booting, please wait. We'll see the Anytone logo. And then it'll come back up on my default startup channel. So uh, there is that. Now, something new that they have in the software itself, when you go to export the code plug between your 878s now, uh, they are working on this for the 578 software. They just don't have it done yet. But if you go to Tool up here on the menu bar and then click Export, you'll notice we have a new button that says Optional Settings. That's right, folks. You no longer have to reset your key functions and all your other settings. You can actually export them now. So when you make a new code plug from scratch, you can just import the optional setting file itself and all of your stuff will carry over for the optional settings. So you can export your optional settings. And then when you go to tool, import, click OK. And then we get this here again. We see we have optional settings and we can tell it to import that optional setting file. So if we make a blank code plug from scratch, we can do the optional setting import and that will actually let us import that. Now, something else that is in here under tool is we see satellite data writing. Um, this has a write button. I haven't messed with this yet. I know that there was a YouTube video that somebody has already put out on this. Um, so for those of you who are into satellite communications with your handheld, uh, this is probably something that you're going to want to use. Um, and let me go ahead and exit my shared screen here. And on the menu itself, we have menu. And we can go down to satellite. And then we can do location or satellite on the menu. I'm going to pick satellite for the moment. And it says no GPS position. That's because I can't get a GPS position lock in the house. So um, that is the reason why it won't work. Um, if we go to location and hit select, it'll let us choose either fixed beacon or GPS. So if we type in our 
uh, information in the uh, APRS info on the code plug software itself for the fixed beacon, it'll actually allow us to take and put in exact GPS coordinates. And then we can use that instead of the GPS coordinates um, themselves from the satellite. So if we're like standing in our yard, but we know that we can't get a GPS lock, um, we can use fixed beacon instead. Or if you're in the house and you're using an external antenna, you can do that instead. So right now it's showing fixed beacon is 39.3833 north and 094.5811 west. And it's showing the grid square is EM29RJ, which is not my fixed beacon location. So that is not set up, unfortunately, in my radio, just because if I've got the handout outside, I use the GPS to lock on. So there's that. Again, these are two new features for the CPS and for the radio. As far as the change log goes on what was changed, uh, give me just a second. Let me grab that and we can find out exactly what the change log was for this. Let's see here. Change log. All right. So one of the things that they put in the change log that I hadn't seen before was if you're using Windows 10 or newer, do not install the GD32 virtual driver. Windows will automatically pick up the driver if you're using the correct programming cable. If you're using a programming cable for a Baofeng or another radio that has the K1 style Kenwood connector that has the chip built into the USB cable, it won't work with the Anytones. The Anytones have the driver or the chip built into the radio themselves. So don't worry about taking and using the GD32 driver. That is only for Windows 7 and Windows 8 and 8.1. So the changes, they added the satellite function in the 3.04 software and firmware, um, which gives the radio a predicted list of satellites, which will transmit recently. And you can select a satellite to check the frequency and transmit time and the push to talk button to transmit to the satellite. Also, there is a icon pack update from 1.21 to 1.22 that allows you to see the GPS icon is now a green satellite. And that was designed by India Kilo 8, Juliet Hotel Lima. So that's actually everything that they've got in the change log. For Lenny's question, it says, can you use a dual band mag mount antenna in place of the small GPS antenna? I'm going to say no, because it's a different kind of antenna. I personally haven't tried anything other than the GPS antenna that comes with the 578. So that's what I would say on that. So I, I can kind of weigh in a little bit. So I don't use the one that it came with. So I have a the uh, cradle point um, cellular modem in my vehicle. And it's mm -hmm. an eight-way, it's got an eight-way antenna. It's an eight-way antenna. So it's got cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS. Well, I ran a second chunk of coax from the mass of SMAs from that antenna to the 578 as it, and, and it works great. So you, you don't have to use the same antenna that the 578 comes with. Okay. So as long as it has the uh, SMA connector and it's the right frequency for the GPS, Correct. Receive antenna, then you're correct. Correct. Correct.